Hi students, in this video we'll continue our discussion of chapter 10 chemical bonding, but we're going to apply a set of rules for more complicated Lewis structures. We've done some simple structures with ionic compounds and covalent compounds using our basic bonding patterns, but sometimes it gets a little trickier. So I'm going to show you a set of rules that I've developed to help keep you focused at all times. So Draw the correct Lewis structures for nitrogen trifluoride, carbon tetrachloride, formaldehyde, and carbon dioxide. Now, you could try to just smash this all together, and a lot of you could probably do that and get away with it. I was not one of those people, especially when I went further in chemistry and things got more challenging. So I developed a set of rules, and this handout is on your Canvas website, and you can apply these rules to even more complicated Lewis structures. So I'll show you the rules. The first rule is you have to count the total number of valence electrons in the molecule or polyatomic ion. If there's a negative charge, like in the case of an oxy anion, you would add an electron for every negative charge. If there was a cation with a positive charge, like in ammonium, you would subtract an electron for every positive charge because it shows an electron deficiency of one. In this case, with nitrogen trifluoride, we don't have charges, we don't have to worry about it, but we do have to count the total valence electrons. So, whoops. So we see that nitrogen has five valence electrons because it's in group 5A, and each fluorine has seven because it's in group 7a. That is a total of 21 plus five, 26 valence electrons. So I did step one. I determined the number of valence electrons. Step two, determine the central atom. Now we haven't talked about electronegativity just yet. So I always tell people which one is furthest away from fluorine. Well, obviously, Nitrogen's further away from fluorine than fluorine. So nitrogen's going to be my central atom, and I'm going to have fluorine surrounding it. Whoops, I wrote an N there. So nitrogen's my central atom. Realize that hydrogen, even though it's an abundant element, can never be a central atom because it can only form one bond and form a duet. Now, for this to be a compound or covalently bounded, I have to connect the atoms by single bonds. So there's one bond, two bonds, three bonds. So each bond has two electrons that are shared and I have to subtract the number of electrons used to connect these three, at, uh, these three atoms to the central atom. So three bonds, each bond has two electrons. I'm subtracting six. I have 20 valence electrons left to satisfy the octets for this species. So what do I do for the remaining electrons? I'll write down here. So right now I have 20 electrons to satisfy octets for this species here. Okay. So with the remaining electrons, the 20 remaining, what am I going to do? First, I'm going to add lone pairs to the outer atoms to satisfy their octets. So the fluorines or the outer atoms, they already have two. So to get an octet, they need six more. So each fluorine is going to need three lone pairs. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I've used up. 18 electrons, there's two electrons left. So if electrons remain, I'm gonna attach those to the central atom. So there's two left, I'm gonna attach those to the nitrogen. And I gotta subtract those, right? So there's no more left. If no electrons are remaining and central atom has an octet, you're done. So if I look at nitrogen, does it have an octet? two, four, 
six, eight. Nitrogen has an octet. Each fluorine has an octet because we made sure of that in the beginning. So this structure is happy. It's satisfied. And what we also notice is it follows those basic bonding patterns with group 7A elements like having three lone pairs and one bond and group 5A elements having one lone pair and three bonds. Let's try another. So carbon tetrachloride, count total valence electrons. Carbon has four, there's four chlorine, each has seven, 28, that's 32 valence electrons. So next, who's the one furthest away from fluorine? That's your central atom. So carbon's in the center, and I'm gonna have my chlorines as exterior atoms. Then I gotta make sure that the chlorines are bound to the carbon. One bond, two, four, six, eight. I've used up eight electrons. How many do I have left? I have 24 left for the distrib distribution of the remaining electrons. So of those 24, what do I do? I first add lone pairs to outer atoms to satisfy their octets. So each outer atom of chlorine has two electrons. It needs six more to accomplish an octet. So what am I gonna use? Lone pairs. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. I used up all 24 and I have no electrons remaining. So if electrons remain attached to the central atom, no electrons remain. So I'm not gonna put electrons in the central atom if they're not there. So I'm gonna skip that step. If no electrons are remaining and central atom has an octet, then you're done. Does carbon have an octet? It does. Two, four, six, eight. And we see that carbon has the bonding pattern of four bonds to achieve an octet because it needed four more electrons. And we also see that chlorine follows group 7A pattern with three lone pairs and one bond. Let's try another one. So we got to count the total number of valence electrons. Two hydrogens each have one. One carbon has four. One oxygen has six. So that's a total of 12 valence electrons. So who's going to go in the center? Hydrogen is furthest from fluorine. This is true. But hydrogen can never be a central atom because it can only form one bond. So the hydrogen is going to be an outer atom. So between carbon and oxygen, which one's further from fluorine? Carbon. So we got carbon, we got oxygen, we got two hydrogens. So what am I going to do? I got to attach everything. How many electrons did I use? Three bonds, two electrons per bond. I used six electrons. I have six left. So what do I do with the distribution of remaining electrons? Okay, I'm gonna take the remaining electrons and do what with them? I'm gonna add them to lone pairs as lone pairs to outer atoms. Do I attach them to hydrogen? No, hydrogen is already happy. Even though it's an outer atom and it doesn't have an octet, it's happy because hydrogen only needs a duet. It wants to be like helium and it only has one orbital or one energy level and that one is really small and can only fit two electrons that's why it only wants a duet so the six electrons can only be added to oxygen and oxygen needs an octet it needs six more two four six so when i subtract six there's no more electrons I'm done. I've used all the electrons in the kitty. So what do I do now? If electrons remain, attach them to the central atom. None remain. So I don't attach them to carbon. 
If no electrons remain and the central atom has an octet, you're done. Carbon does not have an octet. If I look at it, it only has three bonds here. Three bonds means it only has six. It wants two more. How is it going to do that? There's an additional rule. If no electrons remain and the central atom doesn't have an octet, one of the lone pairs we drew on these terminal atoms is actually a multiple bond. So it's easy to show and correct this by taking one of these lone pairs and realizing, you know what? It is part of a multiple higher order bond and it should actually be shared between this oxygen and this carbon. And what I end up getting is this structure. And if we look now, every element is happy. Hydrogens have a duet. And if I look at my carbon, it now has an octet. Two, four, six, eight. And we see that it has four bonds. It's not four single bonds, but it has a double and two single. So it still has that bonding pattern of four. We look at oxygen. Oxygen is happy. It has two lone pairs and two bonds. It's not two single, right? It's two lone pairs and a double, but it's happy. So my final answer is this structure here. So this was different because I had to form multiple bonds. Let's try this one more time. CO2. So there's carbon, four valence electrons, two oxygen, six each, that's 12, plus four, I have a total of 16 valence electrons. Who's gonna be in the center? Carbon. It's further away from fluorine, oxygens are on the side. Now I have to make sure that the oxygens are bound to the carbon. Two, four, two bonds, four electrons used. I have 12 valence electrons remaining. What am I going to do with the remaining electrons? First, I got to satisfy the outer atoms octets. How will I do that? I will add lone pairs to these outer atoms first. So each oxygen has one bond. It needs six more electrons. That's three lone pairs. That's six, eight, 10, 12. And now <clears throat> I've used up that 12. I have no more electrons left. So if electrons remain attached to the central atom, none remain. I can't do anything. If no remain and the central atom has an octet, you're done. Carbon does not have an octet. So that additional rule. If no electrons remain and central atom does not have an octet, move lone pairs on terminal atoms to form multiple bonds. If I look, I can move one right there and one right there, and I end up getting this structure. And if I look, this is happy. Carbon has four bonds, and again, the bonds don't have to be all single, but it has two doubles, which is four bonds, and each oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs. That's my right answer. Now, a lot of students ask me, well, is there another way to do this? And the answer is, yeah, you could have done it another way. Instead of picking each oxygen contributing one lone or a pair of electrons to form a double bond, we could have actually said, well, hey, could I have done this? Could I have taken a lone pair from one, uh, two lone pairs from one car, uh, oxygen? You could have. You would have gotten something that looks like this. And if you look, this is considered a valid Lewis structure. Why is it valid? 
Carbon has an octet. Is that it's a triple bond and a single, four bonds. All right. Oxygen over here has an octet. Three bonds, six electrons, and one lone pair. And over here, it has one bond and three lone pairs. So that's also an octet. But if we look at the one in blue, this is not, it's a valid Lewis structure. It's actually referred to as resonance. So it's a valid Lewis structure, okay? Um, but the reason why this one doesn't work is it's something called formal charges, and we don't do that in this course. That's for a later course. But you can look at it as it does not have the preferred bonding pattern for oxygen. Oxygen would prefer to have two bonds and two lone pairs, which we clearly see right here. So this is a valid Lewis structure, but this one is the preferred. This also shows us a case of what is referred to as resonance. And resonance is where you can move electrons around to get other structure. That's kind of an introduction uh, down the line. We're gonna hold off on that, but right now, the better preferred structure is the one in red where each oxygen has double bonds. I hope that helps. I'm actually going to make another shorter, another video on resonance to kind of go into what we just did.